Hi there, Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to Energy Jeff Talks, episode 98. It's not 90. Is it 98? I don't know. It's 96, 95, 94, 93. Uh, it's 96. Oh, it's close. Joined, I'm joined by my co-host, Anonymous Phil. Yes. And our guest host, uh, Kyle. What? He's not listening. Roll the intro. Screen share. That's why is it not showing this? Uh, there we go. Wouldn't you like to get away? It's 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 Friday. Friday. And they're always glad you came. These podcasts have broken down into four parts. First, we have how weeks have been, followed by some sort of news, followed by your comment, followed by a random fourth topic. Today's fourth topic is recall. Well, okay, hold on, hold on. Well, let's discuss this here. Do we want the fourth topic discussing new trips or discussing the current trip that we just went on? I think it'd be better to say future trips, because otherwise we'd only talk about in this first segment, because we didn't do anything other than this trip. Yeah. Significant. Okay. So. Uh, that's, alright, whatever. Uh, so, in the last week, us two, three, went two. on a, oh, I was counting screens. <laughs> us three went on a trip. Uh, up until, uh, Friday, when the video came, the vlog of it came out. Nobody had any idea that we were going to Nevada. <laughs> nope. Everybody's like, oh, they're going to go out to Western Nebraska as usual. It's like, they, we they did went travel to... in that direction. Yes, we traveled around the area. Uh, but uh, yeah, we, we went right past mm -hmm. 75 miles per hour. Just mm -hmm. And uh, we, we drove. You want to tell We you? drove, I drove. You drove. You didn't let anybody else drive. <laughs> Yeah, I, I you, don't know if I wanted to trust you. You can't, see, you can't say, like, oh, I drove the whole thing. It's like, you can't be mad about that. You wouldn't let anybody else drive. I mean, that was the thing, you know. I didn't know if I really wanted to trust anyone else with a car that I've, I haven't even had for barely three months. And you drove it a quarter of the way across the country. I did. Oh, actually, it's probably closer to a third. How does that make you feel? Oh, well, you know, I finally got to drive on the interstate for the first time over... Let's see, I think the farthest I drove on the interstate was, let's see, what is it, 45 miles to Omaha? Really? Yeah. You never driven to, like, Grand Island or anything? No. I did that when I was 14. Well, the farthest 15. I've driven on a, on the interstate is, like, less than an hour. That's crazy. I've and driven... I drove 12 hours, I think. That was the first day. I think that was the longest we drove. Uh, continuous. Mm. Yeah, that was, yeah. We drove all the way to, like, the Wyoming border of Utah before we stopped. To sleep. Yeah. We'd stop before then. But like that's the longest continuous drive. I've, well, I guess we stopped for lunch. But and we stopped to talk to the bank. Aside from that, that is the most I've driven in a day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that... See, see, it was you, like 11 and a half hours or something. We really did, we really did put to the whole... No, it was 12... Yeah. We really, you know, a lot of, you know, everybody always asks, like, how far can I drive in a day? Yeah, we, uh, we Well, I mean, 24 hours we could drive to California. But in 12, we were able to drive all the way to, uh, uh all the way to the, the, oh, hell, we could have, hell, Utah, basically. Mm -hmm. We were, like, four miles from the border, so. We could have driven straight to Utah if we really wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, it was the funniest thing. We woke up the next morning, hopped on the road, and like, oh, there's Utah. Okay. <laughs> oh man, that was good. Yeah. That was good. Oh yeah. Um, today I went to. There was a customer at my store with a T-shirt that said Molin High School. Molin High School. Well, it could be any Mullen. There's probably a lot of different types of Mullins. It was Mullen, Nebraska High School. No, oh, well, they should have talked to them. Tell them their their night skies are very nice when, when they're not cloudy. When they're not cloudy or hazy. <laughs> not cloudy. I was, but then I didn't. 
We see we need to get in contact with those people so we can get out there. But uh, you know, that's a, we don't talk about that. Yeah. Uh well, you know, you know, it was crystal clear. Uh, it was raining. Was that raining this morning or yesterday morning? There was one. I, I went to bed. This morning. The last time I saw the sun, it was crystal clear outside. And then I went to bed at some point, and I woke up some morning, and it was just raining. I was like, I wasn't expecting this. I think that was this morning. It was this morning. It was this morning. Yes, it was. I just, my, my days have been compressed, and yeah. I don't know what's what anymore, because I haven't been working. I haven't been to work in a week. I don't want to go to work mo- for uh, Monday. No, yeah, this break was really, really nice. You, you, your idea for me to spend the rest of my this rest of my twenties, anyways, <laughs> in a van traveling the U.S. You, you've broken me now. I, <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, I don't want to do anything else. Yeah. So, uh, Kyle, we've been doing a lot of thinking about this whole RV thing, getting an RV. And now that's all we've been focused on is getting an RV and just traveling until we're dead. Not until we're dead, at least until we're out of our 20s. And then we start working. We meet a nice girl. We meet a nice girl. We meet nice girls in Cali. And... See, we just do a Did bunch of traveling anything? until we're 30, guys... and then we settle down. What are you saying? Did you break anything when you were looking at RVs? No, but I did break my leg. Or not bruised. The it videos that bruised. Phil was sending me. I was genuinely concerned he was going to break Maybe, something. Oh, oh, are you talking about the semi, the semi we found? No, I'm talking about struggling to open up and close the shower door, <laughs> then turning around, looking at the queen-size bed, and jumping on that it. That was you. Oh, that was me. I wanted to see what it felt like. Yeah. If anybody was going to break something, it was him. And he did. He and, cut his leg open. Well, it's not open. It's scratch. It's a, it's a scratch. And then the next RV you went into, it said no stupid people on board. Oh, yeah. yeah I did zoom in on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no stupid people on board. I remember that one. I think our favorite, though, if we had to pick one, is the one that looks like a semi. Because you'll probably need a CDL license. But I don't think I showed you. But it has, like, the actual horn that you grab and then, like, a little walkie-talkie so you can talk to the But that's not, like, the favorite one that we'd pick to drive. One of the bus-like ones was the better one. Oh, yeah, the little one. It had a washer and dryer. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, and it felt like a school bus to drive it. It, But it was was huge on the inside. Absolutely massive. You You should get the, um, what is it? What's the RV that has like the classical horn? Like da da da. That's a Dixie horn. You can do that with any RV, and that wasn't an RV. That yeah. was the that was a car. Yeah. Was that a station uh, wagon or something? It's actually, that the, the Dixie horn. It's actually what it's actually is. It's literally it's called a Dixie horn because it plays uh, 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 the melody of Dixie, mm. the song Dixie. Way down south in the land. This is uh, uh, Union Dixie, but uh, nevertheless. Anyways, uh, so, okay, Kyle, what did you enjoy about the trip? I finished a book. (laughs) You've finished lots of books on our other trips, though. Yeah, uh, this trip made me mad because I should have been done with that first book that very first day. But for some reason, I... You slept. You slept a lot. And and we didn't even do a lot of twisting and turning the first day. It was the Uh, second and third day when we did a lot of twisting and turning. No, what I thought the funniest part was... was I don't know why. I've just always been really tired lately. What I found was funny is that you slept the most out of anybody, and you were the crabbiest out of anybody. I was? Yeah? (laughs) They told me to ask you a question. You just... That's because you guys piss me off. We were asking genuine <laughs> questions sometimes. You just like snap back or like, okay. okay. Phil has that aura to him. What? I have an aura? This is Phil. Phil does. Oh. Just has that aura to him where it just pisses you off. What did I do to, you? What did I do to piss no, you off? No. What did I do? He said me. He said Phil. Oh. What did I do? 
Oh, I, I actually see that now, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just living with you for 20 plus years, and I'm just like finally breaking. Oh, you broke a long time ago. <laughs> you, yeah, you, you, you know, you, one of those times I came over in the past, you, you and you threw something at him, like something that I'm like, oh, he's he trying to day. kill somebody. I'm like, I think you've broke here. That's <laughs> when that broke. So, Dan when do I what? not throw things at Phil? Huh? When do I not throw That's things at point. Phil? That's the thing. You broke day one. Anyways, look at that. I made a Mobius strip. Anyways. Um, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, I I wish I took Dramamine. I literally... I, I, you know, I you should, offered it. I, I offered to take Benadryl. You would have been a much better person you taking the Benadryl. I took... Um, I did take ibuprofen. That helped me fall asleep. What? Uh, no, the, the Benadryl... The Benadryl would have taken care of your allergies. You would have been flying high. I live off Benadryl in the summer. I'm, I'm taking, yeah, I know. I'm, I'm up to four a day now. Four yeah, a day. okay, so, yeah, I told Phil this. I slept so much. When we got back, I couldn't fall asleep that night until 4 a.m. Yeah, you told us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told Phil that. No, I was there. You've been sleeping too much. Yeah, I didn't fall. That last night when we were in Vail, Colorado, I could not. That took a long time to sleep. I offered the Benadryl. No, even then, like, that was, like, the nicest bed on that trip. And I had it all to myself, and I was still, yeah, could Vail not was sleep. the worst night's sleep for me. The days in had the worst bed, but I fell asleep the fastest. I could not get comfortable in my bed. Because when we were at the days, <laughs> at the days in, I couldn't get comfortable. Like yeah, rock. and then I, I couldn't be comfortable still. because you kept you were at an angle. I could have gotten all kinds of sleep, <laughs> but you slept at an angle, no, pushing me off the bed. That was at the motel. No, that was at motel Vail. six. I was by myself. That was the best night's sleep. I hated motel six. That place sucked. <laughs> You know, it was the fun. You know, the funniest thing, the the last hotel was the nicest hotel. But it, so we stayed in Eagle, Colorado, beautiful little mountain town. I highly suggest just don't go I, there in the winter. Okay. Go to Glensville. Yeah, yeah, Glens, yeah. Glensville. Okay, so I think Eagle is part of Vail, Colorado. Well, they're all I think it's a valley, but yeah. I think it's Vail, Colorado, but I think it's just a subsection of Vail. I mean, they are Could separate be. by like two miles of wilderness. So I, yeah. I Could be. But no, 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 no. Beautiful little mountain town. Absolutely gorgeous place to stay. Just don't go in the winter because it is a ski town and the rates at the hotel in the summer, 75 bucks a night, is about as cheap as a night's sleep you can get anywhere. Uh, it'll be a great night's sleep, despite what we've said. However, however, in the summer, in the winter, since it's a ski town, you will be paying almost 400 bucks a night for a room. And yeah. that's absurd. Now, if every hotel in the country charged that price all year round, RV would be very, very, would be very, we'd make a lot of money. We, we would save a lot of money with RV. Mm -hmm. Do we have to get a... Do you have to get a pass if you're going to park the RV somewhere? I mean, it depends where you park it. So, you park at a Walmart parking lot. So then you don't get a ticket? Over, yeah. As long as you don't stay over 12 hours in a Walmart parking lot, I'm not going to ask questions. Well, I mean, I've had my car at IV for uh, 18 hours. Because I worked night crew one day, and then I went to NSC the, like, the, like an hour after my shift was over. The new student enrollment thing. I was so freaking tired because I could not sleep. Uh, well, I could not. Sleep. This is also. I sleep. Well, this was but also. I got, so I got to <laughs> my night shift. You know, at six, and then I had to be at NSC at like seven. So I basically changed, and then my dad took me to the NSC thing because he had to go to or whatever for something, and so we slept my car there at high V, and I didn't get back to it till like four o'clock that afternoon. I mean, it's so it was there from ten p.m. To 4 p.m. the next day. Yeah, but day. like, but 
at, at at night they know that's you, and then during the day it blends in with all the other cars. Yeah. The only issue is at night, and you're parking in RV. <laughs> So people are gonna ask questions. That's why if you just get a van, where it's you know they still it's like the, stealth mode. But those vans yes. still look like, and you don't want a stealth camp. Stealth camping is how you get arrested. We had so many parks in our RV, and he got arrested. So many parks in our camp are at our show for like two days. No, he's good at it. Why? So many parks in our camp are at our show for like two days once. There was a, here on Fletcher, there was a, there was a, there was a, a camper parked that the police went and investigated multiple times. Well, there's people park at Walmart all the time here at 27. Well, it's hard, they, I mean, they might just be, st I don't think they're staying overnight. Well, I mean, I've seen plenty of people that were there at like two in the morning. Mm. And so when I worked night crew or whatever, it's like, um... I'm pretty sure they're sleeping there. Certain okay. hotels you can park in their parking lot and they won't notice. Or they won't care. Yeah, it, it really depends. You, you have to find the right parking lot. If you're staying in a small mountain town, you get screwed over, but... Uh, no, I mean, if we go back to Eagle with the RV, just look at that hotel at, what was it, 9.30, because remember, there was no clerk? Well, that was I mean, this time, but I mean, if we're in the winter or something during busy season, well, the other you thing have about no... going in the winter is you gotta have snow tires or chains. Well, that's yeah, true. I mean, that's only if there's a lot of snow on the road. And I mean, I've I... never driven an RV, and I don't think my first time driving don't should be worry, when there's I'll snow. Be oh yeah, and your first time driving will be when there's snow on the road. No, no, no. We have lots of experience before then. I plan to drive across the United States in an RV. Um, so you, you, so you do want to do the I eighty trip? No, <laughs> this isn't the I eighty trip. This this will take months. Oh, of me you know, even... driving a few hours here or there, driving a day. Did it cross weekend. your mind where you're gonna park this thing? Walmart. No, no, no. He's talking about like permanently. That, that's fifth segment, fifth, fourth segment, fourth segment. You keep distracting me. Anyways, all all in all, though. What did you all think of the Nevada trip? Uh, I mean... Cold. We went there. We spent the majority of the night in the car watching movies. It's because you didn't want to sit well. It was cold. And when we got it out to really see the cold. stars... Yes, they were very beautiful. However, but there's still light pollution. You also didn't stay late enough. I did yeah, like okay. how we could see stars all the way down for like the horizon. Two hours? That was very nice because uh, in Molin, you know, the haze kind of prevents you from seeing stars out of the horizon. I mean, that's when you go in the fall. I mean, we don't know what it looks like right now. We did. Well, we went in September that one time. That's the fall. That's cold. But that was during fire season. You could. You we remember we could see the haze. Yeah. So what are you saying? The best time is now. Oh, so we go to Mullen now when it's cloudy. Because it's rainy season. So that's the issue. See, right now it's, it's cloudy. It's but, rainy season. But it's the best time to if this. Which is not why I'm rainy. suggesting every like weeks, every Saturday, Sunday, when it's not a new moon, provided it sets early enough or rises late enough, we drive down there. It's got to be past midnight. Yeah. And before midnight, it has to set. So very, very, it's only that week after. Yeah. Well, anyways, I had a wonderful time. I thought it was great. I it was cold. Why? So you still enjoyed it, even though those light pollution? Yeah, yeah I, mean, I enjoyed it. I still saw things I couldn't see here. Couldn't see in Mullen. I will say the only thing about driving is... I couldn't really stop to take pictures or really enjoy much of the scenery. See, I don't care. I'd rather just drive. See, I don't know. For me, from a passenger point of view, I always enjoyed being a passenger. Because I could just sit and stare out the window and look at everything. A driver, you have to like, look at the road the whole time. That's fine by me. <laughs> you weren't looking at the road. I yeah, was too. You often were not. <laughs> After there were times where it's like, it's like Phil, we're going in another lane. He's like, oh, sorry, I was looking at the mountain. And I'm like, 
Look at the road! I know. I wanted to look at the mountains. So, uh, you should have been a passenger, and I should have been driving. <laughs> I wanted to, but yeah, I, I don't know. I we have I haven't driven with you for more than ten hours. Ah, we've been fine. I had enough coffee in me. I don't know. I I still there was only one point where I actually dozed off this entire trip, and even then I wasn't really even asleep. Oh really? My eyes were just closed. Was it when we were like in the car for like two hours waiting for ten o'clock or something? No, I never slept during that at all. That was cold. I was freezing, and I had two blankets on me. Well, no, I wasn't cold in the car. I was cold when I was outside. I was cold in both. Well, yeah, once the sun set, I get cold. But before that, that's why I went for a walk. Got heated up. Got you know, the Galactic Center wasn't as impressive as it never, Mullins. It was it never rose. You never saw it. We never saw it. We, he wanted to leave. Mm, nice well. up. Then what was that big cluster of stars, huh? That was part of the arm. What cluster of stars were? You gotta be more specific. You're talking right above. That's a cluster of my there, wa there was an arm that was that was above the horizon, but it was partially mm. visible. It wasn't the it wasn't the uh, part with the galactic. Galactic. Yes. I see. And not that you would have been able to see it anyways, because it would have gone right through that light pollution. Or right above it, it wouldn't have been that good. So, no, no, we'll have to try, we'll have, we should have to try the other spot. Out there. Or why don't you just take, why don't you just take a boat and, like, drive off into the ocean? Well, see, okay, the thing about the ocean, right, is the ocean's good for, uh, getting away from light pollution. However, the you ocean... You can't really crew, take a telescope. There. You can't bring a telescope because the boat, A, even if you anchor, is constantly doing this, unless you're on the equator, which you don't want to be on the equator. is not a whole host of other issues. The other issue is there's a lot of water vapor in the air, and it, it, it's, it's, it can be very hazy. But if you if you get the right conditions, yes, the ocean is beautiful. I, I watched a video where a guy, he works on a, uh, on a, on a shipping boat, one of those cargo ships, uh, he's a he's a navigator or something. I don't remember. Anyways, uh, and he talks about watching the sunrise and looking at the stars. But he says the stars are the best out of the ocean. And even then, actually, out in the ocean, depending on where you are, you're still going to have uh, light pollution from boats. Uh, because he was talking about having to avoid... There, there were parts where I was like looking over and you could see all these boats all around them. It was the Chinese uh, fishing fleet. Uh, you, try, you have to. You're just constantly having to try and avoid those. And I'm like, so maybe you won't get. I mean, unless you're out in the Pacific, out in you know, middle of where they where, where they plan to drop the ISS. I I still think it'll be hard to avoid Point Nemo. Yeah, I still think it'll be hard to avoid uh, lights. I mean, obviously, if you go outside of a shipping lane, you'll be fine, but. In the shipping lanes, I don't think so. Uh, nothing permanent, but you're probably going to be next to other boats anyways. And I, you have to have lights on the ship all the time anyways, so they can see where you are. So There's that too. So unless you're on a stealth U.S. boat out in the middle of the Pacific hunting Russian, sub, mm. Russian and Chinese submarines, yeah, you, you're kind of SOL. And you're not going to have a lot of time. I mean, you actually will have a lot of time above deck. You'll be searching for pirates and, and submarines. So, you know. There you go. Join the U.S. Navy. Become a freaking... Start and, and somehow figure out how to get in one of our stealth boats and end up in the middle of the Pacific somewhere. Yeah. There you Is go. Is that going to be a, what? a donation sub? Or just go to Africa. Spend the night in the Sahara. Yeah, I will do it. Or just go to Atacama Desert. That too. Or find a place in the Arizona Desert that mm -hmm. doesn't have any light pollution. So good luck. Go to Mexico. Uh, I think... How well are the stars... The problem is there's not really oh, wait, much... No. Uh, they don't let you at the peak of Everest, do they, at night? In the southern... What, what are you saying? Sorry. He's... They don't let you at the peak of Everest at night, do they? I mean, theoretically you could if you wanted to. It's not like there's like think... a, a station up there that says, nope, gotta wait till 9 a.m. 
Plus, do you really want to climb to the top of Everest, spend $65,000 in the dark, mm -hmm. and then climb the one of the most dangerous peaks in the world? In the climb dark. Everest just to see you, stars. You complained about the freaking... Yeah, you the, complained about the cold in Nevada. You complained about the air <laughs> in Colorado. You, you, That's because my lungs are terrible. <laughs> Yeah, and you want to climb you die Everest before base camp. You wouldn't. You you you'd land in Nepal, and your in your your ears would just rupture, and you'd die. Because like the average worse altitude ways to in Nepal go. is like twenty thousand feet. There's worse ways uh, to go. I don't think so. Have you looked at like no? Well, okay, maybe not twenty thousand feet, but like most places in Nepal, like oh, and maybe average if you take all the mountains. But I was thinking like. Base camp. I think base camp is already pretty high, because like, like all like of, twenty thousand feet. Well, the whole section of Nepal is really no, no. Don't load that one. Give me this. No, like it's right there. That's not the one we want. It's this one. Uh, Why well, you don't touch the mouse? Now I gotta blur things out. Basically, that's what I mean. 10,000 feet, yeah. Peak elevation. Oh, yeah. Which is right where we were. So you would die. Nice. Actually, we were laughing today. Uh, because... No, give me this before you click something again. That's why I run the mouse. You run the mouse? Yes. Anyways. No, no, no. See, see you, you complained we were at... Freaking 5,000 feet. 10,000 feet for a long period, you'd be dead. Wait, who was, com he was complaining? He complained the entire time about the air in his lungs. Yeah, because my lungs are crap. You, you also lungs. don't exercise. So, the dust, no, it was because of the dust in my lungs. What dust? From Nevada. You also don't exercise. You don't go I anywhere, you don't enough. do anything. I like to take a lot walks. Uh, apparently it's not enough. No, no, no. You can't be like me and just live off of farm strength. You don't you're, have farm you, strength. Your daily uh, miles that you get for the day is however long you work. <laughs> And even then, I, from what I've heard, you just sit around. Like on your days off, I'm sure uh, the not... longest walk you take is from the bed to the fridge. Yeah. You know what, Phil? <laughs> I'm being You're gonna wake up. You're gonna wake up with your chest opened. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll die before you can walk to my place. <laughs> no, 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 no. You, when you spend the night there. You're gonna open your chest up. But I will say... He'll get out of bed and then collapse in the middle of the hallway. I will <laughs> say, though, trying to kill somebody is actually very oh. difficult. They talk about, uh, in a Criminal Minds, when people are stabbing other people, how much force it takes to stab somebody. It's a lot. And for the knife to actually go deep and then to do it repetitively, it's a, it, you have to be really strong. Well, I mean, what if you just stabbed with the belly button? It's still a lot of force, surprisingly. <laughs> to just pierce the skin? Well, if you're just going a little bit, no. Well, but I mean, like, I it's figured... like a full stab to kill somebody. Well, I figured if you just one stab and then they bleed to death. No, these are serial killers. They're... They want you dead, not suffer. No. The ones that made you suffer, they tie you up and electrocute you. Well, see, yeah, I guess and, you could... And skin I could, you alive. You, you tie them up, tape their mouth shut, and then stab them, and then they bleed to death. That's... No, but some of them did that. But the, the strong ones, they would, like, grab you and just... Kill you. Dead. Lots of stabs. They keep stabbing you after you're dead. It's a lot of work. Because I'm sure you can kill a dead guy twice. Of course you can. Yeah, I Bring mean... Bring them they, back. Yeah. I mean that's why you can. All, that's why the saying is there: kill a dead, kill a dead horse. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyways, 